everyone we all must have received pocket money during our school days and we had to use that pocket money in order to meet our expenses but many a times what used to happen what would have happened with all of us would have been that we would have fallen short of that pocket money for instance whenever we have went out with our friends to watch a movie or for a brunch or buying or purchasing certain gifts for our friends during their birthday and many a times in order to meet those expenses those extra expenses when we were out of cash from our pocket we have also borrowed from our friends or siblings in order to meet that expenses such similar situation are also faced by the government of the country while managing the entire expenses for the economy so this is what we are going to discuss in today's video whereby we will be talking about the shortfall faced by the government and what are the different types of such shortfall and what are their implication for our economy so let's start but before that i welcome you once again to another special session and where we will be talking about deficits so before talking about deficit let us first understand the difference between debt and deficit now these two words are many a times used interchangeably but there is a big difference between debt and deficit now what is deficit so whenever we have fallen short of our pocket money so in case of the government whenever the government's total spending has exceeded the total revenue or the total income that is that he has in his hand that difference is known as deficit however if those deficits now in order to meet those deficits those extra expenses that we have not we have made we go on taking loan so in order to meet those shortfall the extra loan or the loan that has been taken or the borrowings that has been taken adds up to the debt so the accumulation of the debt of the deficit and meeting those deficit through borrowings is known as debt right i hope the difference is very much clear to you here you can see that for example for the financial year 2020 this was the amount of deficit for the financial year 2021 if this is the deficit and for the financial year 2022 if this is the deficit if we accumulate all of these deficit over the period of time that will result in debt now let us understand this by an example for example let's say that you have joined the first year of your college and you received certain amount from your family in terms of money so your family has given you certain money and let's assume that this amount is around 500 rupees so 500 rupees your parents have given and you need to meet all your expenses for example making payment for your college fees your tuition fees your rental your food or purchasing any kind of uh, mobile phones or paying for the uh, travel that you are making in order to reach the school now suppose your expenditure for that year exceeded because you had also made certain expenses in order to party with your friends etc etc and your expenditure thereby increased to 800 so what is the deficit what is the extra amount that you have used it is around 300 of us here so this is known as deficit over a period of time so for one for a particular period in time so ek saal mein aapka deficit kitna hai 800 minus 500 that is 300 now then suppose in the very next year again you have received let's say this time 700 and now the amount of deficit or the amount of spending has that has been done by you is 900 rupees ab aapne 900 rupees spend kar diye whereby you have received just 700 and the extra that you have spent you have taken in the form of loan or borrowings from your friend or personally so what is the excess that you have borrowed it is 200 so this is the deficit for year 2 for the very next year now this separate year wise is known as deficit but if we add these two together then that will constitute or will be known as debt which will be 500 rupees so your total debt over the period of time over the period of 2 years here will be 500 rupees 
I hope the difference between debt and deficit is clear to you. Now let's talk about different types of deficit. So this is just a summary which says that debt comes from repeated deficit. Repeated deficit over the period of time. And deficit comes from spending more or in excess of your revenues. Okay? So let's talk about the different types of deficit. So deficit can be broadly categorized based on who is funding it, based on the financing part, how it is financed. And secondly, based on the type of transactions. What are the type of transactions they are, you are doing? Is it of revenue nature or of capital nature? So based on the type of transactions, deficit can be classified into four types. That is revenue deficit, effective revenue deficit, fiscal deficit and primary deficit. Now, based on, the, on how it is financed, it can be classified into budget deficit and monetized deficit. So we are going to talk about all of these deficit in today's video. But for that, I am pre-assuming that you know the different components or the different constituents of the receipts and expenditure, both revenue and capital receipts and both revenue and capital expenditure. If not, there is a table here which explains or gives a list of your revenue, your revenue sources, your, your revenue as well as capital sources. And here your expenditure sources. So this is for you in case if you do not have much understanding. And if you want me to make a separate video on this, you can write it down in the comment section. Now let's move forward and understand the very first deficit that is revenue deficit. Now if we talk about the formula, how it is calculated, what is the short form? So here we are just considering the revenue part of our receipts and expenditure. So it says it is the excess of revenue expenditure over your revenue receipts. So what is revenue deficit? Revenue deficit is revenue expenditure minus revenue receipts. Now what are this revenue expenditure? Revenue expenditure are those expenditure which are in the form of uh, providing salaries, pensions, subsidies to people. So all of these constitute your revenue expenditure. And revenue receipts, what are these revenue receipts? These are taxes and non-taxes form of revenue receipts. Non-taxes could be receiving dividends. Taxes, as you all know, direct taxes, the corporate taxes that com companies pay and the non-tax revenue, any kind of capital gains and such. Okay? So, ye hamare sources ho gay. if you talk about revenue receipts and expenditure, so these are those which do not create any kind of asset. If you have revenue receipts, ho raha hai, then you are not creating any kind of assets or no any kind of liability. So, nahi aap asset ko increase kar rahe ho, neither any kind of liability gets reduced. So, this is the, this is the difference between revenue, uh, this is what revenue receipts and expenditures are all about. Now, it means that the total amount of revenue received by the government, maybe in the form of taxes and non-taxes, has fallen short of the entire revenue expenditure done. Jitna pension diya hai, jitna salaries pay out kiye hai, ya subsidies diye hai, that are much more. That means the current consumption, current consumption of the government for that particular year is very much, is higher than what it has received in the form of tax collection. I hope this is clear to you. So, ye aapko shortfall dikhata hai and it also talks about ki kaise government finance karti hai, the amount of money required in order to meet the current consumption expenditure. So, government ki bhi kuch current consumption expenditure hai, salaries de nahi hai, pension de nahi hai. Agar revenue itna nahi aara sarkar ke paas, to sarkar borrowing karegi. It will go for borrowing or it will go on cutting down the revenue expenditure. Jo aapko subsidies diye ja rahe hai, usne rationalization kiya jayega, ya usko kam kar diya jayega, right? Apart from that, this government can also go for disinvestment. So these are the ways of financing your revenue deficit. Now what is the implication? Implication kya hai? So it says that increase in revenue deficit forces the government to cut its expenditure. 
ठीक है एंड देर फॉर आपके जितने भी सोशल वेलफेयर प्रोग्राम है फॉर एग्जाम्पल द गवर्नमेंट हैज इंट्रोड्यूस की आपके मेडिकल बिल्स को पे करेगी बट द रेवेन्यू दट इट हैज बिन रिसीविंग इन द फॉर्म ऑफ टैक्सेस इज नॉट सफिशियंट टू मीट द एक्सपेंडिचर देर फॉर द गवर्नमेंट कैन रिड्यूस द मेडिकल फैसिलिटी प्रोवाइडेड फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगर पहले वो फिफ्टी थाउजेंड रुपीज तक डिस्बर्जल दे रही थी नाउ इट विल कट डाउन टू फोर्टी थाउजेंड रुपीज एज मेडिकल डिस्बर्सल राइट इसके अलावा इट ऑल्सो शोज दैट इट विल वे इट विल इंक्रीज द लाइबिलिटी ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट क्यों वो बोरोइंग करेगी या फिर अपने एसेट सेल करेगी इन ऑर्डर टू फाइनेंस इट्स करंट एक्सपेंडिचर and if it has borrowed then on such borrowings interest payment will be increasing into the future so aapki jo government ki jo future liability hai that is going to increase and this will also result in decreasing the credit worthiness of the government government ki credit worthiness kaise kam ho jayegi because the government will keep on increasing its borrowing theek hai and it also talks about this savings by the government For example, if you are a salaried person, and if you are earning forty thousand rupees per month, and your expenditure for that month comes out to be fifty thousand, that means you are saving. You are not 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 इफेक्टिव रेवेन्यू डेफिशन सो ये एक तरीके का मोडरेशन है ऑल्टरेशन है और मोडिफिकेशन टू द रेवेन्यू डेफिशन है इट टॉक्स अबाउट वॉट इज द एक्चुअल लाइबिलिटी वॉट इज द एक्चुअल लोन और द बोरोइंग डन बाय द गवर्नमेंट इन ऑर्डर टू मीट इज करंट कंजम्पन ठीक है इफ आई टॉक अबाउट वेन इट वॉज अनाउंसड और टॉक अबाउट इट वॉज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन द यूनियन बजट 2012-13 based on the suggestion of Rang Raj Committee on Public Expenditure. ठीक है and now what is this effective revenue revenue deficit? So this effective revenue deficit talks about the total borrowings required by the government in order to meet its current expenditure or its revenue expenditure minus any kind of grants in aid provided by the central government. to the state government or the statutory bodies or the constitutional bodies in order to create certain kind of capital asset agar aapko formula ki baat kare so here is the formula now let us understand ki iska implication ya meaning kya hai why are we calculating this effective revenue deficit what was what is the purpose of having this so let's say अब सबसे पहले आपको ध्यान देना है ग्रांट्स इन एड में नाउ दिस ग्रांट्स इन एड एज वी ऑल नो द गवर्नमेंट सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट सिट्स एट द टॉप एंड देयर आर सेवरल स्टेट गवर्नमेंट्स अब जो सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट है इट प्रोवाइड्स सर्टेन फंड्स टू ऑल ऑफ दीज स्टेट्स सो दैट दीज स्टेट्स कैन फंड और फाइनेंस एनी काइंड ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट्स इन देयर रिस्पेक्टिव स्टेट्स इसको हम बोलते हैं ग्रांट्स इन एड इन ऑर्डर टू क्रिएट एनी काइंड ऑफ कैपिटल और एनी काइंड ऑफ एसेट कैपिटल क्रिएशन एसेट क्रिएशन राइट अब दिस ग्रांट्स इन एड सबसे पहला क्वेश्चन इज इट अ पार्ट ऑफ योर रेवेन्यू इन द रेवेन्यू एक्सपेंडिचर ऑफ द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट क्या ये रेवेन्यू एक्सपेंडिचर है सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट की या ये कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर है सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट की Now there is a confusion among the students. The correct answer is that any kind of grants in aid provided by the central government is a revenue expenditure for the central government. कैसे अगर central government salaries provide कर रही है government employees को वो हम revenue expenditure मानते हैं right? Similarly, central government कुछ पैसे दे रही है state government को that is also a revenue expenditure and not a capital expenditure capital expenditure tab hoga agar central government uses or creates certain assets assets kis se create honge state government will be creating ab sarkar ne government employees ko salary de di ab wo banda apne liye koi ghar banata hai will that be called as a capital expenditure of the central government no it is the capital expenditure of that person similarly the central government state government ko grants provide kar raha hai and the state government purchases or creates certain assets it will be a capital expenditure for that state and not the central government second it does not create any kind of liability nahi asset creation hai nahi liability hai because 
ये स्टेट ये गवर्नमेंट की इन टोटल बात किया जा रहा है राइट एंड देर फोर अगर हम जितना भी हमारा रेवेन्यू डेफिशिट है रेवेन्यू डेफिशिट क्या है एक्सेस ऑफ रेवेन्यू एक्सपेंडिचर ओवर ओवर आर रेवेन्यू रिसीट उसमें से अगर हम सेल्स को जो दे रहे हैं उसको हटा दे The grants given to the states for creation of any capital assets, अगर उसको हटा दे then it will signify, it will talk about the actual money or the actual borrowing required by the central government in order to meet its current consumption. Current consumption in the form of providing salaries, providing pension, providing any kind of bonuses to the government employees. ठीक है तो I hope effective revenue deficit आपको clear हो गया होगा Now let's move forward and talk about another very important parameter that is fiscal deficit. What is fiscal deficit? Now this fiscal deficit talks about what is the total borrowing by the government during a year. Revenue deficit क्या बताता है? Just the revenue revenue deficit कितना है? The just the revenue part of the total expenditure. However, the fiscal deficit talks about the total earning of the government. Total earning in the form of revenue receipts as well as your capital receipts. Dono receipts ko include karta hai and then it deducts the total expenditure done by the government in the form of revenue expenditure and capital expenditure. So, do tariqe ke expenditure hote hai agar koi infrastructure project bana raha hai government. That will come as a capital expenditure. However, If it is providing for salaries and pensions, then it is a part of revenue expenditure. So, if the total money which the government has during a year, which will include the taxes and the non-taxes revenue, tax ke form mein jo revenue is coming in the form of taxes, and secondly, receipts in the form of taxes, and secondly, if the government is selling any asset, bechti hai, if it is selling the uh, public sector enterprises, this investment which we call, there is some money coming from it. That will constitute the total earning of the government. Now, one thing to be noted here is that in case of fiscal deficit, borrowing is not earning. If the government is taking certain kind of loan from, let's say, any from domestic market or from the external market, then such borrowings will not be called or will not be classified as the earning of the government. Therefore, fiscal deficit क्या दिखाता है? Fiscal deficit talks about the total borrowings by the government. अब देखो, if we talk about fiscal deficit का formula, उसका क्या formula होगा? The total, the total expenditure of the government in the form of revenue expenditure plus capital expenditure. I hope this is clear to you. Minus the total, total revenue, the total receipts of the government. What will be the total receipts? Total receipts will be in the form of revenue receipts plus capital receipts. Now, the borrowings are in borrowings are the form are in the form of capital receipts. But we don't want to include nahi karni because it does not represents the earning of the government. The government ki earning ko nahi show karta. So, isko hum ab kya karenge? Minus kar denge. The borrowings will be deducted. ठीक है? So टेक्निकली अगर हम देखें तो फिजिकल डेफिशिट क्या दिखाता है फिजिकल डेफिशिट टॉक्स अबाउट द टोटल बोरोइंग रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट फ्रॉम ऑल सोर्सेस चाहे वो आरबीआई से ले चाहे वो मार्केट से ले प्लस कितना इंटरेस्ट पेमेंट उसको करना है ऑल ऑफ दिस आर इंक्लूडेड इन द फिजिकल डेफिशिट सो लेट अस लुक एट द फार्मूला द फिजिकल डेफिशिट इज इक्वल टू योर बजट डेफिशिट दैट इज बोरोइंग फ्रॉम आरबीआई Plus market borrowings and liabilities. Liabilities in the form of interest payment. I hope fiscal deficit is clear to you. आपको समझ आ गया होगा. Fiscal deficit क्या है? Total borrowing requirement for that year. उस साल कितना total हमें borrow करना है in order to meet our total expenditure, be it in the form of revenue or capital. Now let's talk about further about the implication of fiscal deficit. So what are the implications? First and foremost is the inflationary panel. Since fiscal deficit talks about borrowings or borrowings from RBI bhi hota hai. So whenever the government borrows from RBI, 
that means money supply in the economy will be increasing money supply increase ho jayega because rbi will be infusing money and because of increasing money supply that will result in increasing the prices and over a period of time the increase in the general the increase in the general price level will result in inflationary spiral into the economy so we can say that fiscal deficit causes inflation in the long run agar aapka fiscal deficit badhta raha aur sustained basis pe chalta raha then inflation in the economy will be increasing second is creating a vicious circle of high fiscal deficit and low gdp growth so as i have mentioned fiscal deficit mein aapki interest payments bhi included hoti hai the total liability aapki total liability kya hai borrowing nahi total liability in the form of both borrowing and the interest payment that you need to make so how does it affects gdp growth because you are now taking more loans so in order to uh, meet the finance in order to go in order to meet your expenditure the government takes much of the loan that will affect your gdp growth because you will not you will be using those loan not to create any productive asset but to make payment for your interest iske wajah se aap koi productive assets nahi create kar rahe and that will not increase the growth aapki growth affect hogi and similarly your investment in the economy will be decreasing i hope aapko samajh aa raha hai आप जो बॉर्निंग कर रहे हो उससे आप इन्वेस्टमेंट नहीं कर रहे यू आर मेकिंग सम यू आर मेकिंग यूज ऑफ दैट मनी फॉर अनप्रोडक्टिव पर्पज दैट इज इंटरेस्ट मेकिंग फॉर द इंटरेस्ट पेमेंट इंटरेस्ट पे करने के लिए यूज कर रहे हो सो नो प्रोडक्टिव थिंग इज बीइंग क्रिएटेड और प्रोडक्शन में इंक्रीज नहीं हो रहा देर आपके जो ग्रोथ है विल बी अफेक्टेड and similarly because your growth is getting affected you will take more and more loan that will go on creating more and more fiscal deficit for the economy and therefore the vicious cycle will be created whereby you will be having low growth for the economy low gdp growth as well as high fiscal deficit in the economy the third it talks about crowding out effect crowding out effect kya hota hai for example if we talk about the total savers into the economy jitne log bhi save kar rahe hain that will be finite aisa to nahi hai if you want to take n number of suppose n rupees loan any random any n number the biggest number kya zaruri hai aapko utna hi mil jaye nahi since the savers are limited jo paisa save karte hain they are very limited in number matlab finite finite hai उसको आप काउंट कर सकते हो टोटल कितना सेविंग्स है इन टू द इकोनॉमी दैट कैन बी काउंटेड दैट मींस द सेविंग पूल जो हमारा सेविंग पूल है दैट इज लिमिटेड एंड दिस सेविंग पूल इज यूज्ड बाय द हाउस होल्ड्स इन ऑर्डर टू परचेज द हाउस और परचेज एनी कार एनी काइंड ऑफ कार्स पर्सनल एक्सपेंसेस के लिए एंड सच पूल सच सेविंग पूल इज आल्सो यूज्ड बाय द कॉर्पोरेट्स इन ऑर्डर टू क्रिएट सर्टेन काइंड ऑफ एसेट्स प्रोडक्टिविटी इंक्रीज करने के लिए यूज कर सकते हैं परचेज ऑफ मशीनरी इन ऑर्डर टू हैव लार्जर आउटपुट सो दे क्रिएट प्रोडक्शन और दे मेक इन्वेस्टमेंट इन टू द इकोनॉमी बट अगर सपोज द गवर्नमेंट इज बॉर्विंग सो बॉर्विंग किसी पूल से करेगी एंड द गवर्नमेंट इज बॉर्विंग नॉट फॉर प्रोडक्टिव पर्पज बट फॉर मेकिंग इंटरेस्ट पेमेंट इन दैट केस द सेविंग दैट विल बी अवेलेबल फॉर द corporates for the private sector who are using that money in order to make investments so that our gdp could grow will decrease and this is known as crowding out of the private investment that is the amount of money that will be available to the private investors will be lowered because the government will be taking that money in order to make payment for the interest all the loans that it has taken right in order to meet its expenses isko hum bolte hain crowding out effect and because of this crowding out effect kya hoga there will be lower credit worthiness of the government government ki jo credit worthiness hai wo kam hoti chali jayegi because less money will be available and everyone knows that the government is not going to make any kind of productive assets so people will start charging higher interest rate agar higher interest rate charge kar rahe hain that means their confidence on that government has reduced and therefore you will be getting a lower credit rating theek hai i hope this implication is clear to you 
Now let's talk about the measures. How can you reduce your fiscal deficit? Fiscal deficit को कम कैसे कर सकते हैं अपनी borrowings को हम कैसे कम कर सकते हैं दो ही तरीके हैं या तो अपनी revenue को increase कर लो या अपने expenditure को decrease कर दो How can you increase your revenue? You can increase your revenue by increasing the tax fees. It is pointless that if you increase the taxes, अगर आप taxes को increase कर रहे हो then there are chances that people can go on evading the taxes. So what should be the right approach? The right approach should be increasing the tax base so that more people come out and are more encouraged to pay taxes to the government because it is the ultimate source of revenue for the government. So increasing in tax base. Second is checking on any kind of tax evasion. So many people tax evade karte hai. they do not pay taxes by showing higher losses. So usko we need to check down, we need to provide or come up with certain measures so that such kind of tax erosion is not done in the economy. And third is restructuring the public sector enterprises. The public sector enterprises should disinvest karke, unke shares ko resale karke, the government can use such money, such funds from the resale, from this investment of the PAC in strategic ways. That is making use of such funds in order to provide better health facility, better education. So making strategic use of the funds that the government has received from this investment. How can you reduce your expenditure? So reduction of expenditure can be in the form of rationalizing the subsidies. For example, LPG pe sabko milti thi, right? Subsidy. Now the government has uh, said that it is voluntary. If you want, then only you can take. If you don't, then you, you should pay, right? Similarly, electricity bill ka SI ho gaya, Delhi government ne. So you can rationalize your subsidies. Subsidies ko kam karne ki koshish kar sakte ho. So that your revenue expenditure, your expenditure goes down. Second is reduction in revenue expenditure. A lot of facilities are provided to the government employees in the form of bonuses, uh, leave travel concession, you uh, travel karne ke liye unko aap dete ho, LTC dete ho, unki extra leaves hote hain, unko in cash karne ke liye paise dete ho. So all of these expenses could be reduced. So there can be a reduction in the revenue expenditure done by the central government for the government employees so that hamari jo borrowing hai, that could be reduced. And third is cutting down any kind of avoidable revenue expenditure. So, there are many expenditure hote hai, that could be avoided. So, unko hume identify karna hai, and we should cut down so that our fiscal deficit goes down. I hope measures are clear hai. Let's talk about the modification of the fiscal deficit. That is the primary deficit. Primary deficit kya hai? Sabse pehle fiscal deficit ki humne baat kari, which talk about the total liability of the government and that liability also includes the interest payment. Now this primary deficit is a very important tool because this primary deficit talks about the total borrowing taken by the government in that particular year. Matlab, interest payment, jo hamare paas ke jo humne debt liye hai, us pe interest pay karne hai, agar hum usko hata de, if we exclude interest payment from the fiscal deficit, that is known as your primary deficit, aapka primary, total loan kitna lena hai is saar, agar interest payment ko hata de, that is talked about by the primary deficit. And this was introduced in the budget 1993-94. 93 ke budget mein introduced kiya gaya tha, right? Wherever it talks about excluding the interest payment. Bas ye janna ki is saal government ko kitna doro karna hai in order to meet its entire expenses. Now what is the implication? The implication is nothing but it talks about that it excludes the burden of the past debt. So, past mein jo bhi debt liya hai, uske burden ko. What is the burden? Burden in the form of interest payment. Agar hum usko hata de, then it is your primary deficit, right? So, it talks about your total borrowing in that particular year and not your total liabilities. The total liabilities is talked about by fiscal deficit. Now, a question. What if your primary deficit is zero? अगर आपके primary deficit zero होती है, इसका क्या मतलब हुआ? इसका ही मतलब हुआ that in that particular year, 
the government has taken no borrowings. It says that there is no borrowing by the government. That means you need to borrow or you need to borrow just to make your interest payment. If you have 100 rupees the interest payment karni hai, and your total liability is 100. Okay, 100 minus 100 will be 0. It means that whatever you are borrowing, kar rahe ho, that borrowing is done just to make for the interest payment. If you do interest payment, isse kar dogi, your primary deficit is 0. So this is also very important. What does zero primary deficit indicate? It talks about or reflects the need to borrow in order to meet just the interest payments, right? And what does higher primary deficit indicate? Higher primary deficit talks about new borrowings taken by the government in the current year. So this borrowing is on top of the already existing borrowing. Agar last year tak 100 tha. And this year again you have taken another 50 crore rupees ke borrowing. So this is the new borrowing that you have taken. So year on year if your primary deficit increases that means you are taking more and more loans, more and more borrowings in order to make for your fiscal deficit. That is your total liability. Primary deficit clear ho gaya ho ga. Now let's talk about government deficit ya budget deficit. So it talks about how these are financed. Now, this categorization is done based on financing. Now, we clear that budget deficit. Budget prepare kiya jata hai. What will be our forecasted or budgeted expenditure in this year and in the very next, in this very next, in this year and what will be the budgeted revenue? How are we going to meet such expenditure through the revenue? Agar, if your budgeted expenditure, jitna bhi aapne forecast kiya hai, is more or is higher than your budgeted revenue, the revenue sources, that is known as budget deficit. So what is budget deficit? Your budgeted expenditure minus your budgeted revenue. And revenue, both uh, budgeted receipts, both revenue and capital. How does the government make for such budgeted deficit? So in budgeted deficit ke liye, the government uses short term borrowings and such short term borrowings are usually and generally taken from RBI. So other sources se bhi lete hai, but the main source hai, in budget deficit ko finance karne ki that is taken by RBI. How does RBI provides in the form of any kind of P bills or the central government also has certain accounts with RBI. So the central government can run down all its cash balances with the RBI. So, whatever it has deposited with the RBI, it can be used to use That fund can be utilized in order to make for or in order to finance your budget deficit. Okay? I hope this is clear to you. And for your information, in the year 1997, the budget deficit was discontinued. It was not used as a policy parameter because it just talks about borrowings from RBI. RBI has taken so many borrowings, it talks about it. A better version in place of budgeted deficit, what do we use? We use the fiscal deficit which talks about both borrowings from RBI plus borrowing from the market. All sources. How much is the total borrowing? Kitni hai? That is talked about or reflected by the fiscal deficit. Right now, what are the implications? Agar if your budgeted expenditure is more than the budgeted receipts, then this will increase the debt of the government. You will be required to take more borrowings, more loans in order to provide for the expenditure. Secondly, if you have more loan, loge, then you are going to make more interest payment on the excess loan that you have taken. Therefore, it will result in higher interest payment by the government. Third, now you need to finance, you need to pay back this loan. How do pay back? Karogi? Either by increasing your revenue. That means you will increase the taxes. Future taxes could be increased. Or the other way is you will cut down your spending. So the government will have essentially will have to cut down its spending. And therefore the government can also cut down spending on social welfare schemes as well. Third is potential crowding out the private investment. This we have talked about. Now in order to make payment for such loans, such borrowings taken by the government, 
the government will be using the finite finite sources of savings of the people and therefore less money will be available for the private investors to make the make use of those money in order to create any kind of capital assets and since uh, budget expenditure uh, is financed by taking loan from rbi borrowings from rbi that will increase money supply in the economy and which will increase inflation so the potential inflation in the future could be increased because of budget expenditure i hope the implication is clear to you now let's talk about the last deficit which is monetized deficit now what does monetized deficit means so monetized deficit means the entire money that the government takes from rbi rbi se borrowing kar rahi hai by issuing fresh currency right so it refers to the borrowing made by the central government from the central bank of the country that is from rbi through printing of fresh currency agar if the government is not able to take money or take loan from let's say from the domestic sector or from the external sector koi bhi sarkar ko paise nahi de rahi hai borrowing nahi de rahi hai why is no one making borrowing two reasons first credit burdenness sarkar ki kam ho gayi hogi for example in the case of sri lanka sri lanka ke case mein aise hua the the country was not able to get borrowings so they go on increasing their money supply by issuing or by printing more fresh currency theek hai and this fresh currency is given by rbi against special securities special securities hoti hain uh, of the government of the central government against those special securities rbi gives loan to the government by printing more of the currency and as we all know printing of more currency could lead to recessionary situation because that this will increase the money supply in the economy which will ultimately increase the inflation level the level of inflation in the economy right i hope this is clear to you to monetize deficit bahut simple hai iska ye matlab hua bor government borrowing kar rahi hai rbi se and rbi is making or providing such money such funds to the government by printing fresh currency or new currency right so i hope this is clear to you and this is the statistics the data which i have taken from this year's budget budget 2022-23 and this shows the budgeted expenditure the budgeted deficit of the government of india so we talk about fiscal deficit it is around 6.4% of gdp if we talk about revenue deficit that is 6.4% jitni bhi hamari gdp hai uska 6.4% is in the terms of total liability of the government right now a question might come to your mind ki isko is number se kaise samajh aayega whether it is good for the economy or whether it is very bad for the economy what should be the ideal number now this question is very subjective so you can look at this from different angle the first angle is you can compare the fiscal deficit with other developing as well as developed countries for example us ka fiscal deficit kitna hai ya fir aapke jo suppose your neighbor country china china ka fiscal deficit kitna hai you can compare with your neighboring countries your developing or the developed countries in order to understand what level of fiscal deficit is desirable and second is to understand that fiscal deficit uh includes your past debt as well so what is of more concern to the government government ke liye kya concern hona chahiye that in future such deficit should be reduced and if borrowings are done by the government then such borrowings should be in order to invest into certain productive assets for the creation of certain capital assets if the government is using such borrowings in order to uh, provide better health facilities better education or for providing better infrastructure facility to the people or to the economy that such borrowings should be encouraged right so aise aap numbers ko samajh sakte ho uski implication ko samajh sakte ho talk about revenue deficit it is around 3.8% so 3.8% of your gdp is the amount of this saving this saving by the government ya fir extra current consumption hai government ki 
एंड इफेक्टिव रेवेन्यू डेफिशिट कितना है हमारा 2.6 राइट सो अराउंड 1.2 परसेंट ऑफ द जीडीपी इज गिवन बाय द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट टू द स्टेट इन ऑर्डर टू क्रिएट एनी काइंड ऑफ न्यू कैपिटल एसेट एंड प्राइमरी डेफिशिट दैट टॉक्स अबाउट द करंट बोरोइंग बाय द गवर्नमेंट That is around 2.8 percent of the GDP. I hope these numbers are clear to you. Let's see in the form of a graph. So this is the trend of the deficit in India. As you can see, that our deficit has decreased. But during the pandemic, there is a surge or an increase in the deficit. And as you can see, the blue line indicates your fiscal deficit, which is around 6.4 percent. Then red line denotes your revenue deficit that is around three point eight percent. Effective revenue deficit is denoted by the green line, which is around two point eight percent, and your primary deficit, which is denoted by the purple line, which is around two point six percent. Now, as you can see, that I have talked all these figures in terms of percentage of GDP. So why do we see it as a percentage of GDP? GDP के percentage के form में ही क्यों देखते हैं? For the simple reason that let's say there is two country US and a very small country let's say let's say India. Let's say India is though though is a very big country but let's take the example of India or Bangladesh or Pakistan, right? Agar hum ek country ki example le. Now US has taken certain kind of loans or Bangladesh ne bhi kuch loan liya hai. US ne agar hundred dollar worth loan liya hai. And Bangladesh has taken loan exactly hundred dollars. Now in both cases, it will be difficult for the loan to be repayment. करने के लिए. Now अगर आप ऐसे ही देखो birds eye view से आपको लगेगा दोनों तो same है hundred hundred dollar ही pay करना है. But here you need to understand that the US economy is a big, a huge economy. इनकी जो production है वो बहुत ज़्यादा है. But in case of Bangladesh, it is smaller as compared to that of US. therefore it will be much easier for us to make payment for the loan that it has taken as compared to bangladesh jisne it same loan liya hai given the amount of gdp that it has isko aap aise samajh sakte ho for example a person who is earning and he has two jobs a part time job kar raha hai ek full time job hai iski freelancing and a full time job he has two sources of income right two sources hai income ki and he has taken 100 rupees loan Second, if suppose there is a school going kid, twelfth class का kid है, और उसको इसके parents थोड़े से pocket money दे देते हैं, किसके लिए easy होगा अपने debt को देने के लिए, debt को वापस करने के लिए. Obviously, for this person who is earning, because he has two sources of income, he has more money, और इसको इतना फर्क भी नहीं पड़ेगा. सौ रुपए है वो दे देगा. But for this person, this person will have to hustle in order to make payment. And this is the reason why we always study all of these deficits in terms of in terms of GDP, so that it is easier for the country, for the people, for the economists to compare with other countries. अगर 2.8 percent is the amount of debt, amount of deficit for India as a percentage of its GDP, then what should be that of US? As we compare, कर सकते हैं. That's the reason why we see them as a percentage of GDP. I hope ये आपको समझ आ गया होगा. Now we have certain questions for you. So first question says, which of the following deficit denotes borrowings made by the central government from RBI through printing fresh currency? Simple. अभी हमने discuss किया था. You need to answer to this question in the comment section. And secondly, we have. The other question, whereby there are four statements. These statements are very important. अगर आपने नहीं समझा, अगर आपने इसको solve कर लिया, that means that you have understood it well, and you need to identify the incorrect statements. The first statement says that primary deficit includes burden of the past debt. ठीक है? Second statement बोलता है, जो हमारा ERD है, effective revenue deficit represents the difference between revenue expenditure. And grants and aid provided by the central government to the state government for capital creation. Please pay much attention to the words, because words के साथ भी examiner खेल सकता है, right? 
The third sector says granting aids provided by the central government to the state or to the statutory bodies is part of capital receipts as it results in creation of assets. We have already discussed this point. Ki grants in aid capital receipts ka part hota hai ya revenue receipts ka. And finally, the fourth statement, which says that monetized deficit increases the inflation level in the economy. So this is the implication of monetized deficit, which we have talked about. You need to identify the incorrect statements. So this was all for today that I wanted to share with you. The answers are provided in the PDF in case of any doubt. If you have any doubt or any suggestion, you can write it down in the comment section. I will be personally looking at that. And keep learning. Till then, take care and bye-bye.